In 2022, the global smart office market was valued at $32.4 billion. It is projected to double to almost $62 billion by 2026. In my design career so far, I've witnessed firsthand from the user and the designer point of view, the change in the workplace environment from rigid, structured, enclosed, very much a cookie cutter approach to what it is now. Tech infused, agile, versatile, just places that put people first with human centered design at the forefront. Today, I want to take you on a little journey through the world of office design and show you how technology is currently shaping the way we design workplaces, how we use workplaces and where it's actually going in the near future. Since it's the beginning of the year, everyone loves to talk about trends and kind of look in what's going to be trending for the year ahead. What are the things that people are using at the moment? Technology is a big thing, a big trend in commercial interiors, especially in workplace design. So the chapters for this video are IoT devices in office design, smart lighting systems, sensor driven climate control, adaptable workstations and future trends. Okay, first we need to understand the lingo. What is an IoT device and how is it used in the workplace design? IoT, which is basically short for Internet of Things, involves connecting a device to internet or some type of a network to collect and share data. Otherwise, it's known as a smart device. If it connects to a Wi-Fi or an internet, then it's an IoT device. In office design, it can manifest as lighting that adjusts to natural light levels, a climate control system that regulates itself in real time, or workstations that are adapted to everyone's needs and preferences. So with this IoT technology, we can really create spaces that encourage us to be a lot more productive, support our productivity and well-being. It is estimated that by 2025, almost 87% of the organizations will have adapted to this IoT technology. So you can see how the data that I shared in the beginning that the market will double by 2026 it's very much realistic. Now let's look at the specific IoT technology that is currently trending in the workplace market. Smart lighting can actually reduce energy consumption by 90%. If you install smart lighting systems in the workplace it can save 90% of the energy bill. That is a lot of money. That is a lot of resources. It's actually $60 billion worth of savings. So let's look at some examples. So these systems use motion sensors to detect how many people are in the room, what they are doing, where they are going, what the kind of general activity in the room is like. And when there's no motion detected, when everything's peaceful, then the lights go out or dim themselves automatically. Yes, there are cons to this. You might be working away in a meeting room and suddenly the lights just go and you start to flap around your hands. But if you actually think of the pros of these systems, then a little bit of flapping about in the air is not going to do you any harm. If anything, it's probably going to do you best because you've been so focused and obviously not moving around. So this is like a, also a reminder to maybe get off your seat and move about a little bit. So like I mentioned already, this can be used in meeting rooms, in conference rooms, in corridors very much also in the main office. Usually if the system is in place, then you can either automatically turn it on or off for certain areas. That's why it's smart and that's why it's useful. You don't need to have all the lights blasting to full 100%. You can be smart about it and dim it where it's not needed at the time. We actually used motion activated lighting in these booths for the recent cafe project that I did. The space is not always buzzing. It's not always being used. So it kind of makes sense that we use this type of system in this space. So it was completely cut off from the rest of the electric circuit and it was only working for these booths. It's quite a fun little thing to do as well to just kind of feel like you've got this magic wand and you can turn the lights on just by waving your hand. It's the little things. So daylight harvesting systems, they actually combine the natural light with 
artificial light. The IoT sensors will detect the levels that are coming in from the outside and match the artificial lighting to it so that the light is evenly spread throughout the space. In workplaces, these systems then ensure that there's an equal, comfortable lighting level throughout the space. And again, we are saving energy, we are saving costs, and it's a lot better for the environment. So this type of lighting allows the actual end user, so employees, guests, to control the lighting themselves. And yes, that is very much how we are doing lighting at the moment. You turn a switch and it comes on. But this is more talking about zoning and specific task lighting. So this comes very handy in workstations around desks. Employees can actually control the levels themselves, not just by switching on and off, but actually dimming the light or maybe making it brighter if they need to. So that gives them the power and the flexibility to make their workspace, their desk, their own. And that way it's a lot more comfortable. People feel a lot more relaxed, maybe a lot more productive and focused on what they need to do. A really cool building to actually go and study a little bit more if you are into this type of thing and want to learn more is the Edge in Amsterdam. It's often mentioned as one of the greenest buildings in the world and it actually has 28 thousand sensors throughout the building including lighting sensors that control the lights throughout the building i will leave the link below if you want to read about it a bit in more detail there's quite a lot of interesting information and even though it was built back in 2005 there's still a lot that we can learn and take into modern workplace design they were quite like future thinking futuristic back in even before 2005 because the building had to be designed Okay, I'm sure we have all worked in offices where a colleague of yours was just a roasting heart and the other one was so cold and they had to wrap themselves up and make themselves warm and there was always war around the climate control system in the office. Well, this type of IoT might just be the solution for us. Sensor-driven climate control can actually adjust heating, cooling and ventilation within the space and it can even be set to individual preferences. So this is where we come to those who are extra hot or extra cold. When rooms are empty, which happens a lot in meeting rooms, corridors, big halls, then these systems can save energy by having these settings on standby. When the air quality kind of changes in the room, it signals to the system that you might need to ramp up the ventilation in the space. And these can also be controlled by voice or through an app by employees themselves. Obviously you have to be smart to who you give this access to, but again, it gives employees and the user User, the ability to control it from wherever and whenever. When we look at the savings from sensor-driven climate control, it actually can save energy up to 30%. This is a lot. Once again, these are big savings for the bottom line and in general, really good for the environment. And a little cherry on top, these systems usually can be integrated with those smart lighting systems that we talked about. So you get a full kind of echo system that's functioning on its own and it's talking to each other in its own little network and just creates an environment that is energy efficient and is suited for the user. Okay guys, we are halfway through the video. If you made it this far, I'm guessing you are enjoying the content. Well, if you want to learn more about this topic, like the evolution of the workplace or what mistakes to not make when designing this type of smart workplace, then my weekly newsletter is for you. It's also a great opportunity for us to connect on a more personal, private level because I tend to wrap up every newsletter with an open question about each week's topic. So this week it would be tech in the workplace and it gives us a little space to have a discussion back and forth. And yes, I answer to every single newsletter myself. The link is in the description box. Check it out if you're interested and let's get back to the video. This is probably one of my top favorite tech design trends and I've got the biggest respect for all of the companies who are really embracing this. So imagine having your own desk, your own little workspace that you can adjust to your own liking. The height, maybe it's a low one, maybe you're sitting down, maybe you want to stand up, maybe it's somewhere in the middle. Like I, for some reason, have a very 
tall upper body so I always feel like my my desk's at too low. I need a desk that's a bit higher so I can feel like I'm a bit on a better level. That's me, one person. How many people are there in a company? So imagine if these workplaces can be adjusted to your liking, you've got your motion sensors in there, you can actually control it through an app, it gives you reminders when you might need to get moving, get going, and this is only the top of the iceberg, what an adoptable, adjustable workstation can be and it's not just about the ergonomics of like your chair or your desk it's very much about the comfort and feeling that you can focus you can relax, you can just be in the zone. And IoT technology can actually learn from the way you are using your workstation throughout the day. So you can almost have your settings ready for you and just change them by a click of a button, I guess a tap of a button. So it's like having your own workspace that is unique to you and knows you. I know it's a bit scary, this whole tech world, but let's not focus on how things have been done for years and decades. Yes, people did get on with things and get got things done in the way that it's been for years in a fixed desk in a cubicle but was it the best way for us i think it's important to ask these questions and make technology and iot work for us in a way that really is gonna take us to the next level so the future of workplace design is looking actually a lot more flexible, a lot more agile than it is at the moment, which is great news for all of us. Obviously a lot more tech integration. You can see how these systems are really helping the organizations to save energy costs, to save on their expenditure, and also to help climate change. And it's also helping us with the productivity. Don't wanna sound like a broken record, but I'm a big fan of human-centered design and I see how technology can really help us move forward with that. So yes, it might be a little bit scary, especially AI around the corner and kind of starting to control everything that we do, but I'm one of those who look at things positively and I would like to think that the future could be this utopia where everything around us is working for us and we are really able to take our skills to the next level and be a lot more productive and really our well-being is a lot more improved because we spend our days at our desks in workplaces in offices most of the time 90 percent of our time we spend indoors so Think about those 90%, how much you are actually spending in work or working. It doesn't need to be in a workplace, could be at home, but imagine how much time we do dedicate to this. And technology can really, really help improve our abilities. I also think that hybrid and remote working is not going anywhere. If anything, it will become as a part of the way that organizations operate. So it might be that the older companies now are still gonna stay stuck in this no we need you back in the office and you need to be on the spot but i think the new companies that are coming up and growing they do appreciate the power of flexibility so what this means for the employees is that it is very possible that companies will already have budget to equip you with the best equipment wherever you are so if it is a home office then you have your own desk set up everything is optimized for for you and the way you want to if we go back to the agile workplaces same in the office you have your settings ready all of the workstations are equipped with IoT devices IoT systems so all you need to do is just log in scan it set it to your settings it might not be that you are set to one workstation as everything is very much flexible and people love to use the space in their own way but if you are going and sitting down at any desk in the building you can set it up to your needs and work away like I said, I'm an optimist. I like to look at the good and the possibilities that are out there and I really hope that that's where we are going and in a way, us designers, we have the power to encourage all of this. So when you are designing a workspace, do ensure that you are putting people first. I think that's one of our biggest um, callings maybe as designers 
to design spaces that really help us thrive and be the best version of ourselves. What do you think about this topic? Are you an optimist like me or do you feel like you don't want to really trust this technology and connectivity or are you in between? Let me know down in the comments. It would be really good discussion. Or sign up to the newsletter and make sure you message me back. Okay, it might sound that most of this is out of our hands. How are we supposed to control the tech and the lighting systems, whatever is installed? That is all up to the building managers and the architects and the construction. Well, actually, no, we do have saying. And even though if we are going into space that's already designed and built, we can have these discussions and encourage people, our clients to think about it and maybe consider installing them because it's never too late. You can install the sensor driven cooling systems. You can install the lighting systems. It does not have to come with the shell of the building. And especially with the agile workstations that we talked about, that is very much up to us. And like with anything else in our industry, in our job, we kind of need to know the, the top level information, whether it's construction, building maintenance, health and safety. We need to know that top level information to be able to have these discussions with all of our suppliers and all of our contractors. And the same goes with technology. So if you feel like you are kind of a little bit left behind, make sure to either connect with your existing tech suppliers or maybe reach out to new ones, do a little Google and see what you can find in your area. I'm sure the sales reps are gonna be happy to give you a little introduction on the latest and greatest in the IoT devices. That's all for me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want more like a bite-sized content, then make sure to scroll through my Instagram. I show a lot of kind of behind the scenes, day in the life sort of stuff and also bite-sized content content from each week's topic. Here's some of the videos that are sort of connected to this topic, so make sure to check them out if you want to watch a bit more, learn a bit more, but if not then I'll see you in the next video.